Charlie, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks I watched for the film, me. Like I said, I watched the film last night. Absolutely amazing. It must have been a gem of a character for you to play. Did you know much about Percy? I didn't. You know, I was uh, actually surprised. I mean, he's such a significant um, part of English history that I'd never really come across him. But, um, you know, James uh, Gray, the writer and director, had written such a remarkable screenplay. Um, and the character just seemed so complex and rich immediately upon reading the screenplay. And then, obviously, I got into doing a lot of research about him. So. Um, yeah, incredible opportunity to play such an amazing man. Not only that, you can actually see you go through a physical change in this movie. Um, you, yeah, did you span... lose 40 pounds in like seven weeks? Uh, no, I mean, I st I'd been shooting King Arthur um, with Guy Ritchie yeah. uh, right prior to shoot, starting to shoot this. I had to rapidly lose some weight initially and over the first, uh, that 10 day period, I lost about 15 pounds. And then we started shooting and had 10 weeks. So overall, I lost 38, but over the course of probably 12 weeks. You need to give me some tips, babes. <laughs> we need to you get know, together. it's no fun. Unfortunately, there's no great secret to no it. You there. just you know what, Charlie, have to we should have put you on Sugar Free Farm. <laughs> you would have been you would have been laughing on Sugar Free Farm. You would have lost the weight like farm. that. Well, you go without sugar. Alison will tell you in the break. Sugar. She's yeah, very, that's, yeah. Very that's good the key. I mean, I cut out uh, complex carbs, dairy, and sugar. And, and that's the key. The weight just drops really? off, yeah. Sugar's, obviously I'm not doing it Sugar's the big one, but it's tough. I mean, I'm a sugar addict, just like most of the people in the world are, so it's, it's a tough one to cut out. In the film, um, your character, it, it really takes its toll. This journey, he wants to find this city of gold. It really takes its, its toll on his family. He doesn't see the birth of his second and third child. Um, you obviously was doing this film, and I don't know if this is true, but did you not actually speak to your girlfriend for like three months while you were doing it? Yeah, I mean, there was a, the, a big part of this understanding this character was the, the conflict that he felt between his responsibility to bring forward his intention for his life and fulfill his personal sense of destiny and the responsibility he had for his family, which often went neglected while he was pursuing this other thing. So. So you went method, babes. Well, I mean, I never went to film school, so I get very nervous about those types of labels like yeah. method, but I sort of subscribe to whatever works and whatever you can do to limit the amount of acting you have to do to try to create an environment and a feeling for yourself that replicates whatever the character that you're playing is going through. So, uh, so I turned the phone off, turned the computer off, didn't make a single phone call to anybody uh, That's for, the, for four months. Dedication. And, you know, didn't, didn't go on the internet, didn't send an email. So, you know, it was wonderful to do that in, uh, in um, support of what I was trying to play with this character, but also just to have that experience in the modern world of being taken a sabbatical from technology was really refreshing. And I found myself being very, very calm really? as a consequence, you know? You're constantly bombarded by stimuli, whether it be advertising or getting a text with good news or a phone call with bad news or whatever. Mm. And I find our um, moods and emotions are just constantly being changed, de you know, depending on whatever. So you must have stimuli. the most understanding girlfriend she, ever. She's if I was your girlfriend, she's pretty incredible. Yeah, God, just think about that. But I don't think if I was his girlfriend, I don't. I'd be like, babes, please pick up the phone. <laughs> you would have had so many messages to come yeah. back to. Well, maybe you'd have showed up in Colombia and had a little holiday. Oh, yeah. Is that an invite? <laughs> Next time. Well, she'll take that as gospel. Don't. What, what, what's your back when you're driving away today? Let's um, talk about Columb Colum it's Columbia, isn't it? Yeah. Where, you, where you film this. Mm -hmm. um, how was that for you? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean. Any it, injuries? Any snake bites or anything? No snake bites. I did have a beetle crawl into my ear while I was sleeping one night. Oh, it's like I'm a celeb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, has goodness. cost me some lasting uh, discomfort with this ear. But, but you're all right now. Uh, I was actually on a plane yesterday and it was it was throbbing when I got to high altitude so I think it's it's left a lasting mark you, but you've obviously made quite a lot of sacrifices with this film mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the one thing that that I always want to know when when a film's based on a true story is does that add more pressure to you as the actor to do that story more justice because if it, if it was just written you know you can do what you want with that character yeah i mean i think there's just always a sense of greater responsibility when you're playing somebody who who really lived the um but particularly with this character the deeper i got into researching him and learning what he did and the sacrifices he made i felt a, a an enormous sense of responsibility well, that's, that's him there obviously him just well, no that's you it was that's him me. just there yeah um a second ago <laughs> that's, that's yeah, the real percy falsehood yeah, yeah. obviously the, it's no secret that obviously where it is a true story that he was never found um mm. and 
you've been working on this film for a long time now. Do you have, or maybe even the crew, have any of you had any conspiracies or theories as to what could have potentially happened to him? I mean, the short version of my, the, the, the version that I choose to believe, I mean, there's, there's obviously, as you said, several theories, but his last expedition went off to great fanfare and he was uh, going to a place um, that was sort of on the borders of Bolivia and Brazil which was very, very rich at the time when he was rich and originally going out there because of the uh, rubber boom. But rubber had become much cheaper to develop elsewhere in the world. So this place was in a period of economic decline. So as he went out to great fanfare, everybody knew that he was going out there. There were a lot of people, um, sort of bandits, that were attracted to the rubber trade that were very poor. So I think that maybe they followed him out because he, he also had a lot more money for this expedition. So he had a lot of fancy equipment and uh, his ring and his theodolite and compass and some of the stuff that was known to be on him showed up in uh, pawn shops uh, yeah. soon after he died. So it's scary. I, I, I think, think that he it was would've... living. I think he was out there. Oh, you do? You yeah, think he I was did. living it up yeah, in, I in Elvis? He was on a great time. He's probably watching people. this now. You never yeah. know. <laughs> right. Him and Elvis and Tupac. All having a lovely time.